Welcome back to Satisfactory. Since the last episode, I have done uh, quite a bit of work, unlike what I had at the beginning of the previous episode. Um, let's just begin at the top of my list. I realized that in the um, production line for crystal oscillators, I was underproducing quartz crystals. So I ran out to the uh, quartz and steel outpost and overclocked four of the constructors, the four that are there, to 130%. And I think the power just went out. That is not ideal. Sigh. So at 130%, we are now making 117 of the required 108 per minute. This does require me to revisit it when I start using silica, as the ratio is currently, I believe, off in terms of the usage of raw quartz. However, there are multiple quartz nodes in our vicinity, and there is also the opportunity to overclock the quartz binders and upgrade the belts, should I need that. Then we have uh, MAM. I have uh, researched in the uh, quartz tree. I researched the um, the explorer, which I am quite happy about. I also researched frequency mapping, which gives us the map. And let's see, in Caterium, I researched supercomputer. And under alien organisms, I researched the uh, object scanner improvements and then the hostile organism detection. Doesn't strike me as very useful, but um, I guess it can be useful. You need to hold the, um, the object scanner in your hand and you can right click to uh, uh, switch between the various uh, items that you're scanning for and uh, Style organisms are one of the things that you can scan for, and it does beeping when they are nearby. But, um, you know, for instance, with the uh, angry doggies, um, I don't think the, the scanner is going to be of much help because uh, they'll just uh, ram you before uh, when the thing is beeping heavily enough, anyways. In the hub, I completed all of the. Um, Yes, Gizmo, you're a very pretty cat. I completed all of the milestones in here. So I got the jetpack. I haven't built one yet. I got the monorail train technology, which seems rather daunting. I haven't built any of that yet. Um, it's something that I need to uh, fiddle with before I actually start doing anything with that. These, I believe, were already done. Now, what's the problem with the power before I continue? Right, 2,913. I need to go out and check the, uh, the oil base to see what the power plants there are producing. Maybe even set up a few fuel generators. Um, but back to my list, I also um, got the alternative blueprint for the silicone high-speed connector. It's a decent um, alternate blueprint. I went out into the wilds. Um, I think it's around here somewhere. No, wait. Let's see, the river goes here. So here, about here. Somewhere around, that, that's the iron, so it should be here. There's a copper node there, a normal one, that I um, tapped with a miner, a Mark II miner, and then I overclocked it to 200% so I could get 240 copper ore because I needed to get more cable. Um, so I've connected up eight of the um, smelters in the copper base and made 16 more... Uh, constructors making wire and then four more constructors making cable 
I then also went down to the oil area and I overclocked all four of the oil node uh, extractors to 125%, which means that the two pure oil nodes, they provide 300 cubic meters of oil per second, which is enough to fill up one pipe each, and the other two, um, they provide 150 each, so I have three full pipes of oil with 300 cubic meters in each currently. And finally, I added a Caterium mine. I think it is around here. And I set up an outpost for smelting that. And then I created an outpost near the refinery to make the Caterium wire. And yeah, so I've been quite busy. But there's a reason for why I've been busy. And that's the wrong car. This is the correct one. Now, as soon as we fix the power situation, um, you can see there's a belt going over there. And there are belts going out here as well. These belts go to these two assemblers, and these two assemblers are respectively making um, versatile framework, which we need 2,500 of in the space elevator. This one is making smart plating, which is part of the uh, next process. We are also using motors now. We are using computers. We are using the tactical Borg cubes. I can't wait until I can clean up this mess again, because there are so many belts and so many unnecessary things here, just for the uh, recipes for the... Uh, Space elevator. This one is making quick wire, quick wire stators. We need seven and a half parts per minute, so guess we could uh, underclock this to seven point five. Um, these three are making uh, automated wiring, and then you have this rather interesting-looking contraption here. I have one manufacturer that's making adaptive control units. Uh, we need. 100 of these. I'm not setting up any kind of uh, buffer on this because uh, when this thing is full, I'll just empty it manually. I don't know if this stack, this probably stuck in 50s, and I'll just put it in a container and belt it into the space elevator. They are very expensive to make, you can see. And this one is making modular engines, probably also stacks in 50s, so we need. 500 of those, I think. So it's quite the daunting uh, prospect. As you can see, this one requires smart plating. And these require automated wiring. So that's the reason for the, uh, the added setup in terms of that. Also, I should remove the fog. There we go. So the base is currently, my magnificent driving skills are showing once again, the base is currently a mess because of all these unnecessary belts that I have. I've even done things that I would normally never do because I just can't be bothered uh, since it's very temporary. But uh, like that bend on the belt up there, that's not something that I would normally do, but it's fine for the purposes of... Uh, just making the parts for the space elevator. Now let's have a quick trip. Wait, that's something that I can do. I can bring coal with me. It's a temporary fix, but it's better than nothing. And you can do nice... Uh, 180 degree turns by using the handbrake on this thing. Okay, um, let's just take as many as we can. I probably... One thing that I could get, but that would require a great deal of handcrafting, I could get the, um, the geyser geothermal power plants. I think that requires 100 supercomputers. 
probably also requires some supercomputers to build those uh, power plants, but uh, I have two geysers nearby that I can build on, so handcrafting it shouldn't really be a major issue. What's going on out here? The ratios of my uh, tutorial have changed. Uh, you, no, you, you now only need 2.25, I think. Yeah, 2.25 to make 270 petroleum coke. I wonder if that is the problem. It shouldn't be, but... Um, Let's go put coal into the power plants there. That is not a good time to auto save game. Boop. 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 I can sort these. There is no petroleum coke in that one. There is in this one, though. And, oof. Keep in mind that that is going to work temporarily. So this needs to be below 2.7. As long as it's below... No, we actually need to be below 2.4. Unless this process is working, which it should be doing now. I should be able to power three of these with petroleum coke. And I'm using both plastic and rubber at the moment, but the plastic... I don't know how quickly we are using those. Since they changed around the, um, the output of the um, heavy oil, it used to be 2020 on the plastic, and I'm using more plastic than I'm using rubber. And this one used to be 2010, so they swapped that around so that rubber creates more heavy oil residue than plastic does, which I guess makes sense from a logical perspective, but... Since I haven't been using rubber, that is part of the problem, I think, because that means I don't get enough petroleum coke. What I can do, though, is just build more coal generators up at the, uh, the lake site and um, temporarily tap that. So I'm just going to show off the uh, Caterium base over here. our angry spitting goats from space. We only have five smelters here and one mine up there. Let's try to avoid the uh, wasps. I don't know if we managed to do that or not. And as you can see, there are now three oil pipes coming in from the uh, oil wells. I'm only using 90 on uh, the two that I have in use, and the third one isn't even connected to something. So I guess I need to uh, start making fuel as well. That would also solve the, uh, the energy problem, having a few uh, of the generators making uh, power from uh, oil. While the mob respawning is a good idea, I wish they had a bigger radius on uh, where things respawn. But at least I got rid of that big thing that is... or kept annoying me inside here. 
It's no longer respawning because this is now a thriving factory area instead. So the uh, copper ore is coming in here, and I built, close this up, but I built a belt going underneath here, going all the way over there, and I'll show it from the other side. Let's close this thing up. And then we can drive up into the uh, upper base. You can see there are four new machines here making cable. And in addition to that, we have 16 machines making wire there. And that's a Mark IV belt. That's why it's so quick. I've also changed since that meant that the excess of wire going out from there is merged up there. The belt going from up there over to the container in the uh, main base is now a Mark IV belt. And then we have the uh, connecting up of the uh, copper ore. Comes out through the entrance down there. Uh, Connects up to the smelters. I love this little uh, explorer. And then the uh, ingots go out like this and continues on and down. And I just connected it up like that so it looks at least somewhat orderly. Let's uh, refuel this thing. Oh, no, no, I don't think we can drive through that. I also wanted to drive out to show you the new uh, copper node. You're probably familiar with where it is, but... Uh, I like having these little... show you around episodes. I've done some noblesque work in the um, river so that it's uh, slightly safer to traverse with the car especially now with this speedy little thing this thing feels as if it's almost as quick as the hypertubes when you're driving uh, at maximum velocity we Here we are. I also disconnected the sulfur from uh, the uh, lift system there and I'm now just transporting the sulfur over to the main base where I will make gunpowder and um, nobelisks and cartridges because I'm very tired of handcrafting those. So there might be a space goat over here. But this is the uh, copper mine appear to be a space coach since the mine is actually working. Not bad. And as you can see, overclocked to 200%, which means that it outputs the same as a pure node. But it does require more power, of course, and it does require two of the uh, power shards, but uh, I have plenty of those, so that's fine. So, I think that I've gone through the things that I've done. I don't think there's anything new up here. I 
already shown off this part. No idea what that chest is. I have a few chests around the place that I, uh, when I end up with a full inventory, I just have to uh, get rid of something, and uh, that's when the those chests come in. I should also upgrade the belts with the uh, screws because uh, I'm producing 300 in each row. I could remove and clean up and do things like that. The final thing that I did, which I did mention in the last episode, but didn't show, was this storage container that is uh, storing biomass. And I've also made a bizarre looking belt contraption here, but I think it's due to the height of the container compared to the height of the input of, uh, of the machine. So I think it's a straight correct bend, but uh, yeah. I don't know if I've shown this part. I think so, but... I have more machines making um, concrete here. And in case I didn't show it off, then I'm tapping the uh, pure node of limestone that is down here. There is another pure node somewhere around here, but I'm not sure where. Let's check on the power. It spikes occasionally above 2400. Hopefully I've fixed it with the uh, kickstarting of those uh, coal generators. One thing that I wanted to do in this episode, because, well, it would be fun to get the um, space elevator off with the final tier, but that's not happening because the amount of uh, time required to build those parts when you just have one of them is just insane. So one thing that I thought we could do was look for the cave system. There is a rather substantial cave system underneath this uh... well hello there. That looks like the entrance to a big cave doesn't it? I have one Nobelisk left. I'm not sure if that's going to cut it. Because this is a big thing. No. So I'll pause the recording and get more Nobelisks and then we'll come back here. Here we are. Now let's see if we can uh, get rid of this uh, it's an interesting fungus. There's probably spiders down here. For those of you who are not aware i do have arachnophobia but the reason why i'm using arachnophobia mode in the game is not because of my fear of spiders it is rather because the spiders are very difficult to spot in their default uh, uh, view whereas seeing the cat heads is a lot simpler Okay, we need some more. There we go. Okay, so this apparently is a rather substantial cave system. With a purple slug and lots of poison. Can't see any spiders, but... I don't know how big the area is. Oh, it's massive.
not sure I want to try driving through this because, um, again, for some reason that I am unable to understand, the um, gas mask doesn't work when you're inside a vehicle. So well, that's a bit of a bummer. But at least we got a purple power slug. I can uh, check the map to see if I can find the other entrance, or we can just uh, do some exploration spelunking together in this episode. I'm just waiting for the space elevator parts anyway, so shouldn't be gone from our uh, base for too long, though, uh, in case that power issue resurfaces. What the heck is this kind of place? This looks quite painful to uh, walk in. Not to mention the fact that driving in it should probably make the tires go splat, boom, and so forth. Another poison area. One thing that I like about this uh, Explorer is that it's perfectly capable of driving off cliffs. Hopefully this is not too deep. Oh, it's fine. Another weird area. And that almost looks like a skeleton. But I'm guessing it's some kind of fungus. Sorry, snack tree. What else is out here? I've never been in this part of the map. There's a big spitter there. So what are you guarding? You're guarding a power slug. Anything of interest up here, I wonder? Another big spitter? Usually those are around things that needs protection. Ah, there's the poison field. So you can cross over there. What is this spitter protector? We oh Are you going to turn over again or are you just going to roll down the hill like this? Oh, perfect. Just continue our journey then. There's a hard drive site, I believe I've already taken that. Another dead snack tree. I know that the caves here are very extensive, so a matter of finding the other entrance, or one of the other entrances, there's probably several of them. Yet another poison field? It's through here. Angry doggos. A nice little lake or angry doggos. I've been out here, I remember this place. I can't remember seeing any cave entrances. Hold on. Is that a quartz note? To refuel. Ah, wearing the gas mask and the blade runner. No, 
it doesn't appear to be a node. Just some raw parts. There should be uh, nodes around here, but I'm guessing that they're inside the cave system. Terribly concerned with the wasps out here. Normally I try to avoid triggering them, but... Uh, in the middle of nowhere... Uh, it's not somewhere I'm going to frequent very often. Power slug down there as well. Okay, no entrance here either. Many, many wasps. Here. This is another poison area. Could that be it? does look like a cave entrance. Let's park here and put the gas mask again. It's not a cave entrance, but at least it's a slug. And angry thing. that those are very difficult to take out. It scared me though. Okay, let me just quickly pause the recording and see if I can find where that entrance is. Aha! Uh -huh. So it would appear that we're not very far away from it. Mm. There are the coal miners. Not sure if it's over here. Actually, that's exactly where it is. It's a bad place to enter the cave, though. Yeah, hold on. There we go. Now, okay, let's try this. There should be other... <clears throat> other exits. Eesh, these leaves are not making my life easier in terms of seeing things. Here's the first spider. It's so much easier to see those cat heads than it would be to see the, uh, the actual spiders. Admittedly, they are quite creepy. Particularly when they do that. Is there anything of interest up here? Not that I'm going to be able to find out anyways, but... Let's drive this way and see where that leads. I think perhaps that was a quartz node. Here we are in a... Uh... Oh, here's a quartz note. And a spider. You're running away, are you? Raw quartz pure, so it's down here. There's a power slug up there. Driving around in this landscape is not easy. Let's get down here. I think we can't go up there, but I think that's the uh, way to the part of the cave where we couldn't get uh, past the poison field. This part... 
This part very much requires an obelisk. Stick one here. There. There. And there. And let's run back. Aha. Power slug here. Okay. So we're going to have to fight the spiders. Which is not exactly going to be fun currently. Maybe I can get away? I can. I don't have much health, that's my concern with the spiders. I'm not sure if one of them is a boss spider or... Okay, so this is the other exit of the cave then. Well, this might be a good spot to uh, refill my health. Turn the car around. I do note that I did save the game before I went into this cave. So if I can't get the car out again, I will reload the save because I don't want to be stuck in here. Yes, yes, spider. I, I, you're very cute and cuddly as a cat. And I'm sure you would love to... Ah! So that worked. Now the question is, does it do the same here? Yes, it does. Ah! These vehicles are massively useful. Okay, so we're back to this room. Grey spider wants to eat us. Oh, I'm not sure if we can get the car up here. Ah, we can. That's brilliant. And we can just drive off the cliff here. And we should be able to... I need to slow down, but we should be able to drive up this ramp. I'd say this was an excellent demonstration of just how versatile and effective the um, the Explorer is as a, a vehicle as well. There is no way that we would have been able to do what we just did with a, a truck or a tractor. It would have just bumped into the wall and stood there. Okay, so the power is holding That's something. Let's drive down here. If you haven't been able to tell, I love riding this car. But we need to refuel it. Would suffice for now. Eat a nut. These rivers are uh, interesting roads. As long as they're not too deep, this works wonderfully. It would be fun if they added uh, the water. Uh, coming off the wheels.
Let's go check on the um, adaptive control unit and the modular engines, I think. See if they are uh, full and if we can put them into the uh, space elevator. Indeed. That's one stack of those and one stack of those. Now I need 500 of these, so that's going to take a while. If I had overproduced them, I could have just stuck them into an awesome sink, but... Well, with the power problems... Stop here, uh, let's build, do it on the other side. Interesting timings on those autosaves. Uh, organization, storage container. Door is too steep. Encroaching, blah blah. Okay, let's just build it here then. Like so. And build a belt like that. And put both of them inside. So we're getting there, we are getting there, it's going to take time. We are about one-fifth in with the uh, versatile framework, one-tenth on the modular engines, the adaptive control units, one-half. But I think that's about um, what we have time for in this episode. I. I'm quite eager to see what gets unlocked with the uh, final tier of seven, eight, 7 and 8, so that should be fun. But, yeah, I think we'll uh, end the episode here. So thank you all so very much for joining me. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please do leave them in the comment fields, and I will see you all next time.